Hey folks, Adam Dupay here, and today we're going to be looking at the Ponable.kr challenge BOF. So reading this challenge, it says, Nana told me that buffer overflow is one of the most common software vulnerability. Is that true? And the answer to that question is yes, buffer overflow is one of the most common software vulnerabilities, even though it's now almost 30 plus, 40 years old. And the interesting thing here, unlike all of the previous challenges we've seen so far, rather than having an us SSH to a machine, we download the binary, presumably, and the .c file, and it's going to tell us that it's running at um, on the machine. So uh, what this is, this is netcat, so this is a command to create a TCP connection to the machine located at with uh, ponable.kr on port 9000. So presumably, when we look at this C code, that will actually be there. So I've, um, let's see. So here, I have the code here, and this is actually a very short program, which is nice. So here we have, um, let's see, the main function, argc, argv, doesn't do anything with the arguments, calls function with 0x dead beef. This function gets called with a key and has a buffer called overflow me with 32 bytes and a printf of overflow me and then calls gets on overflow me. And one of the things we know is that gets is inherently insecure. Why? Because it reads a line, so it reads from standard input until it gets to the end of a line and it copies all the bytes into the buffer, but there's absolutely no way beforehand to know how many bytes you're copying into this buffer because look, you can actually look at the signature of gets. It does not take in an integer to specify how much of the buffer to read. So this is um, a clear problem here. And so, uh, and it's obviously the title of it is BOF, which probably stands for buffer overflow. So it's gonna call gets buff overflow me. And then it's gonna check if the key is equal to cafe baby, then it will call system sh, which gets us a bin sh shell. Otherwise it prints out nah. And it has, um, so you can see that what gets passed into function is dead beef. So this check should never occur. Um, and we can actually check this ourselves. Uh, we can do, copy this line here, netcat, ponable.kr9000. And it's waiting for some output from us. We'll say hello, or maybe it's hanging. Let's uh, use the V option for netcat. That will tell it uh, verbose mode, so it'll tell us more information about what's going on. And so presumably this should work if the internet is working properly. Uh, there we go. So now this is the dash V. So this is the connection to ponable.kr9000 port succeeded. We should get the, um, we should get this overflow me output. But if not, uh, we can still type in our input. Hello world. And it says overflow me, nah. So we can see we got to the, we got the overflow me. Um, one reason why we don't actually see this overflow me, presumably they're using xinetd to run these thing, uh, to run this output. And because of the buffering that's happening, it will usually buffer and only output when it gets to a standard output. So. If this was overflow me new line, it would actually print that out. Or if there was an F flush after this printf, it would probably flush it as well. Um, so that's just some kind of details to kind of help you think like, oh man, is it actually working? It is actually working properly. So great. So now we, we also have it locally. And so the idea is we need to change this key to be cafe baby. So. Um, one key thing that I like to do when I'm looking at these challenges, especially a buffer overflow, the C code is great, but really when you're doing a buffer overflow, you've got to look at the binary itself because you want to overflow exactly as much as you need to. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up in hopper. Um, and I think I actually have this already. So I use hopper. You can use object dump. You don't actually need anything fancy for this. Uh, object dump dash capital D to try to disassemble everything of BOF and pass that through less. So we can see here we get all of this and I can search for main 
or um, so that's the main function. I can search for func, and actually I don't even need hopper, so I won't. Um, let's not use this. Well, I'll show you. You can do this just with GDB, but any kind of disassembler. So here we're looking at the assembly instructions. So we can look at the C code, and this is the C code, and then we can look at the assembly instructions to see, okay, what does the C code get compiled into? So by looking at this here, um, you'll notice there's some interesting things in here. For instance, this call 645, presumably the linker will go in and link that up to the actual um, call that it's supposed to be. But we know, so we can, um, easily check so if key is equal to cafe baby so here's compare ebp plus eight with cafe baby um, so that's exactly what we want to to deal with here so what we can do so we know that this is the comparison and so we know right before that is the call to gets so this uh, instruction is going to be the call to gets and then here this is gonna, uh, if we look at this code here, this is gonna move EBP, so load effective address is gonna calculate whatever's in EBP minus 2C and copy that value into EAX and then it's gonna move EAX onto the stack and then presumably call gets. So this means that gets is being passed our buffer, so we know that our buffer's at EBP minus 2C. So why is this important? This means we can start constructing our exploit. And because this thing is um, remote, what we're gonna do, um, exploit.py, is we are going to use uh, pwn tools to do this. And this uh, has a lot of benefits so that this way our exploit is repeatable and we can launch our exploit at the remote system or we can even uh, launch it against our local machine. So. I need to get the, I already have a solution for this, so I'll not try to do this. So let's do this, there we go. We'll just copy this. So we're gonna input from Pwn Tools, we're gonna input all, we're gonna set the, and if you don't have Pwn Tools, you should definitely uh, check out Pwn Tools. It's a great uh, tool chain to use, and it's really important, even on these very basic challenges to write them in these Pwn Tools format because that becomes incredibly important and getting those skills is really important for future CTF. So if you can't quickly write a Python script to use Pwn Tools on a simple challenge like this, then how are you gonna do it on a more complex challenge? So that's an important thing to be, excuse me, be able to practice. So what payload do we want to send? Well, we know our buffer. so. The problem is if we just looked at the C code, we'd say, oh, our buffer is 32 bytes. But depending on how this is compiled and how the compiler wants to allocate space on the stack, we can see here, if we go back here, that our buffer is actually allocated negative 2C below EBP. So if I get a calculator um, and I can calculate, let's see, 2C, calculate that, it's actually 44 bytes. So what I need is, uh, and I can actually do 2C here. So these, so when we think about what's the stack layout gonna look like, so there'll be, um, and actually I'll bring up Notability to do this because I like uh, doing this here. So let me go here, new thing, there we go. All right, so what we know, so we have our lovely, lovely stack and I don't have a good drawing utensil, so I'm just being very, um, getting kind of a rough stack here. So we know, let's say EBP is here, right? This is EBP and we know, so this is a stack. So remember, um, I always draw it 0x00 at the bottom and these are all Fs. So this is FFFFF. Um, and so at, so here's EBP, at EBP minus 2C is our buffer. So this distance here is going to be uh, 2C, right? So it's, it's important it's not 32. So if you just try to do 32, you're not gonna do uh, overflow. But if we, so when we start writing, when we have this gets command, now we're gonna fill this up with A's. So all of this, in our exploit that we're writing here is gonna be 
two CAs. Now, what is currently at EBP? It's the saved EBP. So it's the previous function frames EBP. Above that, we have saved EIP. And in a normal buffer overflow, this is what we'd be trying to target is to try and overflow that saved EIP. Of course, that's not always the case. So above, um, what we do wanna do is above that is the key. So this is the value that we will want to overflow. So what we're gonna do is we want, uh, we're gonna have two CAs, then we're gonna have uh, four bytes of the EBP, and then four bytes of the instruction pointer, and then our key. And so that's gonna be, and we can um, make this a little bit easier, P plus equals B, uh, P plus equals the C. Now this is our key. So now we just go back to the C code here. Um, and you know, it's always good. Actually, the first time I did this, since this is a walkthrough, I manually typed in cafe baby and I did cafe BB, B E B E, and it did not work. And it took me a good 30 minutes of debugging time. Um, so P32 is a function that's going to pack that in terms of um, little endianness. So it's going to make sure that the endianness is correct here. So rather than we could uh, do this ourselves and go XBE, um, XBA, and so on. Uh, but this is one of the things of getting used to and getting better at using Pwn tools is we don't need to do that. And now we should be able to send a line. And why do we need send line? Well, when we looked at the man page for gets, it reads a line. So it reads until it gets to a terminating new line. Um, and so that's what we want to make sure to pass in. So we need to send a line, send our P, uh, which is our payload, and then uh, connection.interactive. And that will turn this to be interactive. And so let's see how this goes. So Python. Uh, exploit so it's opening a connection do ls uh, cat out the flag and here we go so actually I can see that here's all the files here you have VOF you have everything that you need and we have the flag right here we did cat flag so there we go we just pwned it and we go back here, off. Of course, the login here, it must uh, set cookies to a very short value. So do BOF, flag it, auth it, and we already authenticated it. So there you go, that's the walkthrough and that's how you do the buffer overflow for the pwnable.kr challenge. All right, thanks folks, see you later.